I'm Chris and this is a short video about intraosseous access. Here in the ACT Ambulance Service uh, we use the EZIO drill system uh, which I'll be demonstrating today. Intraosseous access is indicated in patients who require drugs or fluid administration in life-threatening situations where a vein cannot be cannulated. It's a fast, reliable method of gaining access if performed correctly and for this reason has a place in the pre-hospital environment. It can be used in both conscious and unconscious patients. However, when performed in conscious patients, analgesia should be used as the introduction of fluids to the intraosseous space can be quite painful. In Actaz, we use 1% lignocaine primed in the giving set. Contraindications include the introduction of the needle over obvious fracture sites or the sites of previous I.O. attempts. Avoid sites with overlying skin infections and those patients with osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bones disease. A few things just to be aware of. Always ensure correct placement post insertion. Avoid any growth plates in children and make sure your equipment is properly prepared uh, including priming the giving set, you don't want to go filling your patient uh, up with air. EZIO recommends three sites of insertion, all of which has its respective pros and cons. The proximal humerus is a site that is close to the heart, meaning that any drugs administered are circulated quickly. It can be quite a difficult spot to locate, however, especially in larger patients. The insertion site is located by placing the patient's hand on their abdomen thus exposing the greater tubercle. The distal tibia is a very easy landmark to find, but is the most distant insertion point, meaning any drugs administered will take longer to circulate. It's located approximately 3 cm proximal to the most prominent point of the medial malleolus. Our final insertion point is the proximal tibia. This is located 3 cm below the patella and 1 to 2 cm medial to the tibial tuberosity. This is the location we're going to be demonstrating today. The EZIO is drill inserted, thus you require an EZIO power driver along with an appropriate sized needle set. The yellow needle at 45 millimetres is for insertion into the humerus or in those patients with excessive tissue. The blue needle is 25 millimetres and is for adult patients greater than 40 kilograms. And the pink needle at 15 millimetres is designed for paediatric use. Prior to any intervention, it's important to lay out your gear and make sure that everything's working. At the rear of the EZIO power driver, you'll see a small LED light. This will turn green when you depress the trigger, indicating that the battery is full. Inside the needle set, You'll have a needle vise port sharps block, the intraosseous needle itself, an easy connect a small giving set, an adhesive sticker uh, to secure the iode in place, and a small wristband uh, that you can use, and that just indicates post handover that the patient uh, has an IO in situ. As discussed earlier, in a conscious patient, 1% lignocaine can be used to prime the giving set. In all other circumstances, such as cardiac arrest, normal saline is entirely appropriate. I'm now going to demonstrate intraosseous insertion as performed in the proximal tibia. I begin by thoroughly cleaning the site with alcohol or chlorhexidine. Uh, aseptic technique is very important uh, as this can mitigate the risk of infection. Firmly attach the appropriate size needle to the needle driver 
and remove the cap. Firmly push the needle through the skin at 90 degrees until the tip of the needle touches the bone. Verify that the 5mm mark is still visible. If not, you might need to attach a bigger needle. Stabilising the limb and maintaining steady light pressure at 90 degrees, power the driver on by squeezing the trigger continuously. There will be a loss of resistance as the needle enters the medullary space. Disconnect the driver from the needle. At this stage, the needle should stand securely in the bone. Remove the stylet by turning anti-clockwise. Secure the self-adhesive stabiliser over the insertion site. And finally, connect the primed Easy Connect tubing to the needle hub. A 10 to 20 mil flush might be required to allow fluids to flow freely. As always, be sharps aware and dispose of any sharps in a safe manner. Some important pre and post insertion considerations. As I said before, aseptic technique and you just want to mitigate that risk of any subsequent infections. Appropriate analgesia as required. As I said, we use lignocaine in the ACT ambulance service and make sure that IO is secured firmly in place. Once you've got that access, you don't want to uh, knock it out and knock anything loose. And final point to consider, if you are going to run fluids through the IO site, is to use a pressure bag uh, with about 300 mil of air. That's going to ensure uh, that that fluid runs thoroughly through, through that space. Thanks for watching my video, uh, I hope you found it informative and I look forward to your feedback.